Sharks, I'm Danielle Link. And I'm Angie Escalona. On today's show, we'll watch a news feature highlighting a local pizzeria. And a movie review on the heavily anticipated movie, Rogue One. There will also be a special holiday-themed Man on the Street. All this and more on WSRK Shark News. But if I could, I would get homemade pizza from Tatore. One of America's favorite foods is pizza. 94% of Americans eat pizza regularly. But do they all eat good pizza? And do they all know how it's made? Ristorante Italiano Tatore, a local pizzeria, offers patrons the classic pizza experience with a modern twist. Mariano Albain, the restaurant owner, gave us a behind-the-counter look at what it takes to turn some simple ingredients into a delicious treat. Well, the step for mixing a pizza is, first of all, I take the dough from the refrigerator, I put some flour on the dough, and then I stretch it to get the 12 inches of our pizza, and then I put tomato sauce on top, and then I put the toppings, depending the, what the customers order, mozzarella, tomato, basil, then I put all together into the brick oven. Convection ovens like the brick oven at Tatori's use a combination of convection, reflection, and conductive heat. Depending the temperature of the oven, sometimes it's 700 degrees, so sometimes it takes three or four minutes to have a pizza finish. Also inside of the oven, the temperature is different depending on what part you put the pizza. It's a very powerful brick oven. It don't use gas, only wood. And you have to know it a lot because you don't have uh, bottoms or something to control the, the heat or the hot inside of the oven. You just control it with how much wood you put inside. Uh, it's an oven that has 10 years old and it's, it's, it's the heart of this restaurant. The hearth? or central fire is located within a dome-shaped cooking area where heat circulates. This style of oven allows heat to flow naturally while the hearth conducts heat and the dome of the oven reflects the heat back to the pizza. Conduction is the movement of heat without direct contact. This can be seen in the oven as the heat moves from the hearth to the pizza. After some time in the hot oven, the pizza emerges with a cooked dough crust and a steaming sauce and cheese topping. Making pizza isn't an easy task, but it is definitely a rewarding one. With sweet sauce, savory cheese, and fresh dough in the oven, the pizzas will be on the rise. I'm so excited for the release of Rogue One. It's supposed to be the perfect movie to watch for the holiday season. I don't really know if Star Wars can be considered a holiday movie, but here's a review on the anticipated film. Hey everyone, I'm Ethan Toth, and welcome to WSRK's movie review segment, Spoiled Broccoli. And this is the review for the Star Wars spin-off film, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. What will you do when they catch you? What will you do if they break you? If you continue to fight... Rogue One is directed by Gareth Edwards and stars Felicity Jones, Diego Luna, Mads Mikkelsen, Riz Ahmed, Ben Mendelsohn, Alan Tudyk, Donnie Yen, Jang Wen, Forrest Whitaker, Genevieve O'Reilly, and Spencer Wilding. The film follows a group of Alliance rebels who steal the plans for the Death Star, the Empire's massive superweapon, in between episodes 3 and 4. This is the story of that plan, its execution, and the fate of our heroes. Let's infiltrate the Empire and dive right into this review. If the Empire has this kind of power, what chance do we have? First off, I must say how much of a Star Wars fan I am, which is why I must talk about how incredibly this film is placed within the Star Wars canon. 
Besides taking place in between two episodes, there are multiple references and straight-up involvement of characters from episode four, which we haven't seen since 1977. Just seeing these characters brings a joy to my eyes, from the obvious to the not-so-obvious. Regardless, all references to the other films are done incredibly well and with a lot of style. Speaking of style, this film has a very interesting one. It substitutes the traditional Skywalker saga full of Jedi and lightsaber fights with actual boots-on-the-ground combat, and that's something I really appreciate. Coming at an event from a different point of view can make or break a movie, and fortunately, this POV is an awesome one, specifically because of what they see. And what they see is some awesome intergalactic action, from X-Wings dogfighting TIE fighters out of the sky, to Rebel and Empire forces battling it out on the beach to Scarif. This film is jam-packed with action, and I'm thankful for how well it's done. Lastly, I must talk about the characters, because this is the first time we're seeing some of these characters, I could see myself not really caring for them. And to some degree, I was right and wrong. I surprisingly didn't care for Felicity Jones' character of Jin Erso. I thought she wasn't that interesting aside from the ties she had to the plot, and I mainly just couldn't get into her character. Something was off about her. Further analysis is needed. But as for characters I did enjoy, I was a huge fan of Diego Luna's character of Cassian Andor, Alan Tudyk's droid character of K2S0, and I was especially captivated by Ben Mendelsohn's villainous Orson Krennic. A few of the characters filled their supporting roles perfectly fine, mainly Donnie Yen's Chirrut's Imwe and Jiang Wen's Bay's Malbus. Not only do I mostly like these characters, but their interactions were particularly interesting as well. They had a really captivating team dynamic that I really enjoyed. Lastly, I was actually taken aback by this film's direction. Obviously this is a spin-off film, so I had to expect a different change in the cinematography and the way it looks. It isn't a con, but it took some time getting used to the way things moved and looked. Especially when things don't always take the Star Wars approach, like missing a music cue or a trademark line. But other times it felt so enwrapped in Star Wars looks and feelings that it did feel like a quintessential Star Wars film. So after all that, what did I think of Rogue One? Well, I had some problems with the characterization, and I didn't touch on it, but there are some pacing issues as well towards the beginning. But aside from that, it really does bring me back to the classic Star Wars feelings. It has fantastic action and a mostly engaging group of characters. The Force is strong with this movie because Rogue One, a Star Wars story, gets four Death Stars out of five. Well, thanks for watching everyone. Have fun at the movies and I'll see you next time. Back to you. All right guys, come on, we got a show to start. 40 seconds. Intern, mic me up. Let's go. Clip it on. Let's go. Let's go. Where is my script? I wanted it five minutes ago. Give it to me. Come on. Well, where's my flip cereal, huh? I want it on my desk. Come on, come on, give it to me. Let's go, let's go, we got a show. Now that's better. Available in two flavors, chocolate and dulce de leche. Visit flipsusa.com to see where Flips is available near you. Flips, the best is inside. Hey you. Me? Yeah, you. I have something to tell you. You do? Yeah. Well, what is it? What is it? Well, why didn't you just say so? I think you should join the Sharks Television and Entertainment Club, where many students just like you can make all kinds of videos. Not to mention, we've also won several awards and plan to keep them coming. And the best part is, we sell bagels. Whoa, bagels? Yeah, bagels. So what do you say? Yeah! Sharks TV and Entertainment, for a televised tomorrow. Well, that, one, no, that one's more film festival, that's why. Yeah. Oh, Evan Skolnick, the prodigy, the model student, the master of TV production. A senior at Alonzo and Tracy Mooring Senior High, all are under his reign as TV Production Club president, and the only student to have TV7. My amazing ideas and inspiration, it just comes from this one quote that this really famous guy came up with, TV is life, and it, it just inspired me to keep creating. Um, I think his name was, I don't know, Evan from Evan Productions. I'm not sure who, but I've heard great things about him. He inspires me. Well, you see, I actually discovered my passion for TV production before I was born. I actually had a twin, but that twin wasn't a brother or sister. No, it was a camera. And it spoke to me. TV production is the oxygen to Evan's lungs in which she expels out his amazing movies. And inexperienced students are like the heavy smog. The colleges that I plan on attending are um, University of Southern California and the other schools. Evan's interests do not have much variety. His favorite hobby is TV production. His favorite music genre is TV production. His favorite food is TV production. And most of all, his favorite sport is TV production. Is soccer a sport? No. Is comedy a sport? If you're me, it is. But TV? That's like varsity right there. I love hearing the story.
stories and thoughts of our shark students. Well, you're in luck. Here's a special holiday themed man on the street. Hi sharks, I'm Danielle Link. Today we're gonna find out how some of you spend your holidays. What are some of your holiday traditions? Uh, I just, you know, eat a lot with my family. It's always a lot of fun. Well, it's great. We like stay up until midnight to open the gifts and then as soon as we open the gifts, we get to go to sleep. So we don't really get to use any of the gifts that we opened. I don't think we have any. So what was the best present you've ever received? Best present I ever received probably had to be when I was eight years old. Mom came out to me and says, you know, when a man becomes a man, when he needs his before you're born, she can make you everything. Um, my Labrador. It was um, an electric pencil sharpener. So what's your most memorable holiday memory, good or bad? Well, kind of bad. Last year, me and my mom had to take 10 people's worth of presents down the stairs from the third floor to the first floor underneath the Christmas tree. So by the time we put all the presents out and we went outside with my brother and sister, we were really tired. I remember one year, we went to like Islands of Adventures and it got really wet and it was really cold. And that wasn't fun. Uh, we were lighting the menorah once and my friend's hair caught on fire. Sounds like some of our sharks have some very exciting holiday seasons. For WSRK, I'm Danielle Link reporting. Well, that's it for this week's episode, Sharks. We want to thank you all for being with us since the beginning of the school year. Can't wait to see you all next year. Happy holidays from WSRK Shark News.